Our first speaker is a friend that I've known here for about 20 years, Will Van Lowe. Uh, Will's the founder and CEO of Quantum Energy Partners. It's an energy-based private equity firm, and it has about $11 billion uh, under management. Uh, as chairman of Quantum's Investment Committee and its Executive Committee, he leads the firm's investment strategies in this area. Will also founded Will, uh, Lindrock Capital and has been very active in this whole space for many, many years. He's married to Jennifer, uh, his wife of 22 years, and they have three daughters. Will is a very avid follower of Christ and integrates uh, his teachings into every aspect of his life. But I've worked with Will for uh, 20 years with PA, and he's been a, a real avid supporter of Dennis and the team here. Without further ado, I'll introduce Will Van All right. Thank you, Kyle. And uh, it's always a real treat to be able to come back and do something with Party Associates. It was a, uh, about 22 years ago um, when I first got involved with the action, probably like about 24 years ago. So Dennis, where's Dennis? There's some around here. He's, he literally, you know, people always say, I don't look any older, Dennis, but look any older either. This guy has uh, been doing this for a long time. And, um, it's a great organization. Uh, really was an organization when I first graduated from college. Um, yeah. Helped me to kind of get focused in, on the right priorities. And uh, so, uh, so it's really a, an honor to get to come back and, and speak today. Um, the title of my, my talk is called the 10 Indispensable Qualities of Leaders. And so uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about leadership. And um, I'm going to start off by telling you a little story about a coach that many of you all know, or at least have probably heard of before, John Wood. And um, he's uh, really one of the probably the foremost experts in leadership and uh, has written many great books for those of you that are interested in uh, reading a great book on leadership. Just Google his name, and, and there's many of them that uh, come out. I really encourage you to read some of this stuff. Uh, but uh, the story starts back in March 25th, 1967, and it was a crisp day in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, and Coach Wooden's UCLA, UCLA men's basketball team was playing for the national championship, and they were also going for an undefeated season. And in the locker room before the game, Wooden gathered his team together. And I'm sure many of his players thought he was going to gather them to tell them uh, some motivating stories or sketch out some plays that they might run uh, as the game progressed. Uh, but Coach Wooden simply gathered his team together, pulled up the chalkboard, and started diagramming out where he wanted his players to stand on the court during the national anthem. And then he told them, he said, and these were his only words, he said, win or lose, he said, I expect you to conduct yourselves professionally once the game is over. Uh, he didn't mention anything about the team they were playing, about the opponent, about strategy, about plays. He simply turned to him and said, you've been prepared for this game, go out and play. And the players took the court and over the next 40 minutes, they played an extraordinary game, they dominated the game, they won the national championship, they capped off a perfect season. And for Coach Wooden, this was uh, the first of seven national championships that his NCA or that his uh, UCLA team would go on to win in a row. Um, that's a feat that has never been surpassed before or since. I think the most championships of any college basketball team, men's team, is one two. Uh, in fact, he went on to win ten out of the next twelve uh, national championships. So, uh, an extraordinary feat, and. Uh, you know, a lot of his players over the years have been interviewed, and they were asked, you know, how did Coach Wooden um, field so many great teams? And, uh, and, and what they said was, is, uh, it was his servant leadership. It was his home humility and servant leadership, um, and that it inspired us and it motivated us to do things that we never thought were possible. And, and so this concept of leadership, you know, gets a lot of talk, you know, what is, what is leadership? Uh, Peter Drucker, who's another uh, person that I have read a lot of his books, he's probably considered to be one of the foremost management consultants of all time. Some people call him the founder of modern management. Uh, he put it this way, he said, leadership is lifting a person's vision to high sights, the raising of a person's performance to a higher standard, the building of a personality beyond its normal limitations. In today's fast-paced 21st century world, there's so much talk about leadership and a lack or and or lack thereof. Our country just elicited the leadership of Donald Trump to make our country 
the great economy. America's lack of leadership, both from the Republican and the Democratic side of the aisle, uh, has cast the Middle East in shambles and, and global terrorism is on the rise as a result and democracies across the globe are on the way. Tom Brady, who will be playing in the Super Bowl here just next week, his leadership has carried the New England Patriots to seven Super Bowl appearances during his tenure as quarterback. And OPEC, something that's near and dear to many of us in this room, their lack of leadership and being able to help their member countries manage their production has cast our industry in the worst recession that we've seen in three decades. So leadership is essential to all human progress. And a lack of leadership leads to all kinds of difficulties and problems. Some of you here may be thinking that leadership is not something that I will blessed with. And to that, I'd like to challenge you. Um, you know, in the 25 years I've been in business, I will tell you that uh, I'm convinced that great leaders um, are not born, they're, they're made. And um, they're made just like anything else in life, through a lot of hard work, a lot of trial, a lot of error. Uh, and I think that's the price we, those of us that have been around long enough realize that is the price we all have to pay for, for achieving. But, uh, but great leaders are made, they're not born. And, um, and I think most people, their leadership capabilities are much greater than they, than they think they really are. So what I'd like to do now is, is spend a few minutes um, sharing with you some principles of leadership that, that I have used in the 25 years of business um, and that I've done. And, and I call these the 10 indispensable qualities of leaders. Now, I have to forewarn you, I've got my accountability tables right here. A lot of my uh, teammates from Quantum are here. Even my wife, she showed up, she said, you know, make sure you don't say anything that's not true up here today. So these are, these are 10 qualities, um, if you will, of leaders. And I'll say that, you know, like a lot of things in life, we, we, we try and we fail, we make mistakes, we're never perfect. And, uh, but these are 10 traits, I think, of leaders that if you get up every morning and you try hard and you keep trying to follow them, uh, over time, I think you'll become a, a very effective leader. So the first quality one is, above all else, leaders must have unassailable character and integrity. The definition of integrity is simple. Say what you mean and do what you say. The most effective leaders I've found are humble and trustworthy. Spend time clarifying your deepest convictions for yourself and then make your guidelines for action based on those convictions. Earn others' trust by consistently setting your own personal example. And no one, no one has confidence in a phony or a hypocrite. So take responsibility for your actions and your behaviors. You know, my dad once told me, and actually told me a lot growing up, that, um, and he was talking to me about the importance of integrity. He used to say to me that, uh, that your reputation is what you do when other people are watching you. But integrity is what you do when no one is watching you. And there's, there's a verse in the Bible that, um, that I often refer to, and it really helps me keep right in perspective. And it's from Colossians 3.23. It says, in all the work you're doing, work the best you can. Work as if you were doing it for the Lord, not for people. And as a leader, I think if you talk the talk, you must walk the walk. Because the walk talks further than the top walks. I know that's a tough question, but it's basically saying, do what you say. <clears throat> Quality two, the best leaders are also the best servants. Lao Tzu said, a leader is best when people barely know he exists. When his work is done, his aim fulfilled, they will say, we did it ourselves. Servant leadership means to always put the interest of your family, your co-workers, uh, and all those around you, your friends, above your own. Not until people genuinely believe that you care as much or more about their self-interest as you do your own, will they allow you to lead them. Leaders don't steal the spotlight. They shine it on other people. Individuals don't win championships. Teams do. The legendary former CEO of GE, Jack Welch, I think may have captured this principle best when he said, before you are a leader, Success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. 
Quality three, leaders must have a vision and communicate it effectively. Vision is important to accomplish, and it's necessary, I think, to accomplish any goal in life. What it does is it focuses people's attention and their energy. And I think developing vision requires uh, you to think on three different levels. First, perception, or understanding current reality. Second, probability, or extrapolating from the present to the near future. And third, possibility, or envisioning the organization's best potential. And I think the book of Proverbs uh, says this best when it says, where there is no vision, people perish. Okay, quality four. Leaders are both action-oriented as well as results-oriented. Those who know me well know that two of my favorite sayings are, activity breeds activity, and never mistake activity for achievement. The key to distinguishing between the two is the ability to set and keep priorities. Basically, the first thing is first. This often requires you to delegate or even neglect routine activities to give yourself more time for your most important work. Focus on the important, not the urgent. And the number of things that seem urgent will decline meaningfully. Remember, leaders think and talk about solutions, whereas followers think and talk about problems. Quality five, leaders embrace change. There is nothing more important to success, more difficult to undertake, or more perilous to conduct than introducing change in any organization, including your business, a civic group, or even your home. We live in a world that is changing at an accelerating pace. In fact, the only constant in this world today is change. To keep up, we must be committed to lifelong learning and to embrace but not resist change. Quality six, leaders have a passion for keeping things simple. Great leaders almost always, are almost always great simplifiers who can cut through an argument or a debate or doubt and offer a solution that is simple that everybody can understand. I'm going to give another great quote. Jack Wallace is one of my favorite guys out there. So uh, I, I, I got another quote from Jack, I think, that really uh, hits on this point of simplicity. He says, you can't believe how hard it is for people to be simple, how much they fear being simple. They worry that if they're simple, people will think they're simple-minded. In reality, of course, it's just the reverse. Clear, tough-minded people are the most simple. And I've clearly found that to be the case in my life. Quality seven, leaders understand that their attitude is more important than their aptitude in determining their ultimate altitude. You may have no control over some of the things that happen in your life, but you do have control on how you respond to them. That's your attitude. When you're a leader, your attitude influences everyone around you. So nurture a positive approach. Optimism won't appear automatically, and it certainly won't run perpetually. Work every day to replace negative thinking with positive expectations. The one who influences others to follow only is a leader, but a leader with certain limitations. The one who influences others to lead others is a leader without limitations. From my experience, I've yet to find a person who did not do better work and put forth greater effort under a spirit of approval than under a spirit of criticism. Oxygen, or, uh, encouragement is effectively oxygen to the soul. Quality eight, leaders always treat others with civility and respect. Remember the golden rule here simply, treat others as you would want to be treated yourself. We have to remember that each person, even those we perceive as our enemies, were created in the image of God and are very precious in his eyes and should be in ours too. Not only is treating everyone with civility and respect morally the right thing to do, can't effectively lead people that don't respect you. And if you don't respect them, I can guarantee you, they will not respect you. You have to look no further than our recent presidential election, right? Half the people in this country said they would move to New Zealand 
if Hillary Clinton got elected, and the other half said they'd move to Europe if Donald Trump got elected. And both would be leaders have absolutely failed in treating others with civil civility and respect. And that's the reason that 50 million people on both sides of the aisle claim that the leadership of the other party's candidates is basically not legitimate. I think Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, summed this up best when he said, outstanding leaders go out of their way to boost the self-esteem self of their personnel. If people believe in themselves, it's amazing what they can accomplish. Quality nine. Leaders are independent thinkers and have courage to act. The brain can be developed just the same way as muscles can if one will only take the pains to train the mind to think. I think thinking is probably one of the hardest things to do in life, uh, but you can train yourself to think if you're willing to put the time to do it. And it's just like pro athletes, you know, these guys get out and train every day. Uh, if we want to have, you know, be an exceptional leader in our home, our businesses, uh, we need to take that same approach and, and make sure we're training our minds every day. Uh, to be in the thinkers. And as it relates to courage, I think um, General Douglas MacArthur um, is another one of the kind of my heroes and people that I think really accomplish extraordinary things in, in this world. And, and he once said that a true leader has a confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. He does not set out to be a leader but he becomes one by the quality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. In quality to last, but actually most importantly, leaders pray and they turn to the Bible for wisdom. Leadership is very, very difficult. And as leaders, we're often faced with uncertainty, uh, options that all seem bad, uh, constituents that we can never please, time pressures, and unattractive options. And I have found personally that praying to God, the creator of the universe, who is infinitely more wise, creative, and powerful than I am, and reading from scripture from the Bible are the two most important things I can do to gain wisdom and perspective in tackling challenging leadership issues and problems. I think one of the most valuable approaches to becoming better at something is to find a role model that excels at whatever that something is and then try to emulate that person. And so as a Christian, the role model, my most important role model is Jesus Christ. And when it comes to leadership, I'll propose that the world has never seen a more effective leader. He had unassailable character and integrity. In his entire life, he never lied. He never did do what he said he would do. He never let a person down. His word was his bond. He poured his life into 12 men, epitomizing certain leadership. He had a very clear vision of who he was, the Son of God, and what he came into this world to do to save man from their sins. He was the most eloquent communicator of all times. 2,000 years after his death, he's still the most quoted person in history. He kept things simple. He had but one goal, and that was to carry out the will of his father. Um, he treated others, even his enemies, with more civility and respect than anyone before him or after him. He lived by the words of 1 Corinthians 13, 13, which say, So these three things continue forever. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of those is love. His independent thinking produced the most radical and beautiful literature of all time. And his courage caused him to willingly give up his life on the cross for those that he loved. And he meditated on the scriptures and prayed to God literally day and night for wisdom and guidance. And so Jesus, the Son of the Most High God, needed to submerse himself in prayer and reading God's word. How much more do I need to do the same? To illustrate just how omnipotent Jesus' Jesus' leadership style was, if you look at the 11 men that he poured his life into, that's the 12 disciples less Judas. Um, and these men, by the way, all ended up giving up their lives uh, for what he taught them. 
these men unleashed a movement that 2,000 years later claims 2.2 billion followers in the world today. There's never been a movement that's even come close. And it started with the leadership of Jesus Christ. So those are kind of my prepared remarks today. Um, you know, hopefully some of what I shared with you uh, have, have, have been helpful as you think about leadership and leadership challenges. Um, it's not easy, uh, but there's nothing more important, I think, in our times today, especially you know, in, in, at this very time and present in, in our country. Um, we need leaders, we need bold leaders, we need Christian leaders, and I uh, just want to encourage each of you in your walk of leadership. So thank you.